Hello there, welcome back. In this video we're going to be taking a much closer look at this. It's the Warrior M22 flashlight, which is marketed as a weapon mounted flashlight from Olight. Now I've already covered this quite extensively in a video that I did about Lampen and how to set up various flashlights on various rifles. So I'm going to roughly do more or less like an unboxing sort of a video where I talk you through what comes with the kit and then I'm going to put clips of that previous video at the end so you can see the practical demonstration of how it's mounted to rifles. Okay let's just take a look inside the box here of this M22 Warrior from Olight. First a quick note on the box I don't like unboxing videos but you know the actual box here is important because this is what houses our gear and it wants to be safe it's a well made little plastic box two release clasps there and it's got the relevant information on the front as to what is inside we've got a 950 lumen flashlight it shows it with a belt clip a five year guarantee and what batteries it takes total runtime of 30 hours on the lowest power setting and it's waterproof down to two meters, which is approximately six foot six. So that's the equivalent of IP68. Here we've got IPX8, like IP times eight. In the UK, we'll generally regard that as IP68. Six being the dust rating, and eight being the waterproof rating. In other words, it's totally dustproof and waterproof. Right, we've got the instructions, which tell us how to use our flashlight. We've got the normal propaganda about other things in the range. They actually do a very good range already, Olight, and I hadn't heard of them up until I got this particular flashlight. So I'm quite impressed with the range so far. And in here we've got the flashlight. On off button on the back, totally waterproof, one very powerful LED. takes one 18650 battery or two CR123 batteries and it's got a belt clip which will attach in here and you screw this fella down you screw your end back on and that'll hold it secure I don't bother having that because this is generally mounted to a rifle so we'll take that off that was just there as another option for you if you didn't want the normal end on You've got a pressure switch end here, which screws on in place of the end cap. And you've got a little pressure plate here. And by pressing that, you can switch it on or off. Basically, you press it on, a release off. Or you can quickly press it three times, and you get a strobe effect. Now because this particular flashlight's got quite a powerful beam, a central beam, with a halo around it, it's very very good for lamping because you have your main beam here and your halo for spotting around it. But if you wanted a more diffused light, it does actually come with a diffuser. So instead of having a really intense center to the beam, it diffuses it outwards. I'm not quite sure why you would want that if it was mounted to a rifle, but Perhaps if you were in enclosed spaces or woodland, you wouldn't want a really intense centre to the beam. That's just a little adapter that takes your CR123 batteries. So you drop those in there, slide that in, and that they would basically do the same job as your 18650 battery. So it's quite nice that it comes with that adapter. It comes with various sticky things to enable you to stick this pressure plate to your rifle. I've actually gone for a Velcro fitting, which you'll see in a minute. That's your main weapon mount. That would basically fit onto your rail, where your scope is. Uh, your scope would be here. This doesn't actually fit onto my rifle, unfortunately, though. Got a little bag with two spare seals and a spare end cap seal. You've got a wrist strap, which if you just wanted to use this as a normal flashlight, would just go through here, and that would go around your wrist and it would just make sure that you didn't lose it if you were particularly careless and that's about it apart from the belt carrier 
So again, if you're just using it as a normal flashlight, you could mount that on your rucksack or on your belt. So that just slots in there. And the strange thing is about this, it's actually got a hole cut in the top and in the bottom. So what that allows you to do, if you're walking along and you wanted to just quickly see where you're about to walk to, you just hit that and it lights up the ground around you without the need to take this out of the holster, which is quite a neat idea. Those trees in the background there are approximately 45 meters away and it's really lighting them up. You can see it's got a very tight beam, not much of a halo around it and that is excellent for lamping. That's approximately 35 meters away and it's lighting up a good proportion of that. Not too big, not too little. Perfect for air rifle shooting or 2-2 shooting. Now unfortunately the camcorder doesn't pick up the halo that's around that central beam but my eyes can see it. Uh, that allows you to spot any targets and then get the main beam onto them. It's not a floodlight, it's more of a spot with a halo around it. That's 35 yards away and that is lit up really, really well. You can even see that on the camcorder. So just imagine what it's like in real life. It is even brighter, exceptionally bright. You know, I'd certainly use this on all my rifles. No problem at all. No need for a huge lamp. This fella does the job. Damn it, there's a fox in the wood because I've just been squeaking a fox. You'll see that in another video. <laughs> Uh, it's just, just literally just in those bushes. There he goes again. <laughs> At least I hope it's a fox and not a Sasquatch. There you go. Um, this is approximately maybe 15, 20 yards away. I need to video it that close so you can actually see it because the light chip in this camcorder isn't very good. But hopefully you can see the tight beam in the middle and a really, really reduced halo from that um, red filter. You don't get any well, you don't get any, you don't get much reflected light back, so it's an excellent one to use in woodland. Shooting pigeons out of trees and so on. And also, if you're trying to shoot some lamp shy rabbits, a red filter is very, very good. So they're the items that come in this very comprehensive kit from Olight. I, however, have bought two more items to marry up to this particular flashlight. As I mentioned, I had problems fitting this on my rifle because my reel is only 11 mil, I think, and I think this one it goes to 19 to 21 or 22 mil. It's simply too big for my particular rifle. In fact, it's too big for both of my rifles. So I couldn't use that. So I bought this one. Again, this is from Olight. This is an X-WM02 mount. It's magnetic. And that just fits to the underside of your barrel of your rifle. And that gets a very, very good hold. And that's it, there's no tools needed to fix this. It's basically just a nice big nut, which you unscrew, drop this fella in, screw it back tight and that's not going anywhere so that basically fits under the barrel of your rifle and enables you to go lamping very very effectively now the second thing that I bought and it was something that I was not aware at the time that Olight actually made is a red filter and I use this for lamping purposes because for anything that's lamp shy a red light doesn't scare it as much as a white light. And it also allows you to look up into trees a lot better as well. It, the light, although it's, it reduces the light output, it allows the light to cut through the, the heavy foliage a lot better. And that doesn't seem to make sense, but you basically get a lot less reflected light. Without the filter on, you're basically shining a white light, most of which is reflecting back at you in heavy woodland. And that can knacker your night vision. This keeps it intact. So as I say, Olight do do a range of filters. I'll put the link to this one in the video description. And if I can find the link to the equivalent Olight one, I'll put that in there as well. But basically, if you're looking for a filter for your flashlight and the manufacturer doesn't do them, 
just measure the diameter here. This one is actually 40 mil, and then search for a 40 mil filter. Simple as that. Just look on Amazon or eBay, they will pop up. And I think this one was 6.99 or 7.99 or something. It wasn't expensive. So there you go, you've seen what comes in the kit and what I bought as extras. So let's see how it fixes to my various rifles. This one is fitted with my very newest flashlight. And this one is a Warrior M22. It's got an X mount, which enables me just to take this off and mount it on a different rifle. It would even go on the barrel of a shotgun as well. This one's excellent. I've got this one fitted with a pressure switch. So the switch goes into the back of the flashlight and using a little bit of Velcro, I've attached the pressure switch there. And what that enables me to do is really keep my hands on the rifle set and the only thing I'm moving is my thumb to turn that lamp on and off. So we'll change the mount and we'll put this on a different rifle. Right, so we've taken the pressure switch off, just putting the ordinary end on. And I'm also going to change the mount as well. There's no tools necessary for this. Right, so we've got the standard mount, and the idea behind this one is you would fit that underneath your scope. But the rail on my air rifle is actually too narrow. I think it's only 11 mil, it needs to be 19 mil. Um, so it doesn't fit on there. But that's the idea of it anyway, that would fit underneath your scope. But seeing as my particular scope on here is a 30 mil tube, it's too big for this. If you've got a 25 mil tube, it's going to fit no problem. And luckily, on this particular rifle, I've got a rail underneath. So that just attaches to there. But um, this is really a much shorter range rifle. And that fits very, very well on there. You could put the pressure switch on this. And that's just another way to fit that. Very, very secure under there, but there's no reason why you couldn't put it underneath your scope. But as I say, my tube is too big, it won't fit on my scope. Now if you're thinking, I don't really want the flashlight under there, and if it won't fit under your scope, simply swap it for that X mount, put it on your barrel of a normal rifle, or on the side of this one, and you're back in business. Really, really simple. Take it off, stick it on another one. It's a very good mount, this. And it's got powerful magnets, but they're coated with like a, a rubbery sort of so, like a jacket of some sort it means it's not going to scratch your rifle now for those of you who are interested I'll just show you what an 18650 battery looks like that's it there it's like a double A on steroids and that's a high capacity battery very very good for situations that would ordinarily drain standard batteries and these are becoming more popular now certainly very very popular in flashlights and most of the best ones do have them in. And just as an example of runtime, this one at 950 lumens will give you an hour's worth of continuous use, which is more than a night's worth of lamping because you're literally just switching the lamp on, scanning, finding a target, bang, lamp off. It's not on continuously. There you go, that other end cap's been taken off. Pressure switch end cap put on and fitted in less than a minute. Very, very versatile. Very, very good. There you go. I hope you've enjoyed that video. It was a hell of a lot longer than a lot of reviews that you're going to see about flashlights and various other things that are on YouTube. But I do like to be very, very thorough. I would hate to think there's anybody watching who would still have any questions about it because overall, it's an excellent flashlight. The price point is pretty good. I would say it's definitely worth the money and if you've got anybody who's into hunting and shooting and they've got rifles or even a shotgun it would fix underneath a single barrel shotgun or an over and under shotgun um, it would make a very very good present for a birthday or Christmas or Thanksgiving if you're in the US so that said I, I, I never like giving anything kind of like a 5 out of 10 or 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10 I would just say that 
I would recommend it wholeheartedly, without a doubt. A very, very good item. If you want to check it out, I'll put the link in the video description. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.